Welcome to Wandering North America. This episode is an oral history, not your national, state, or local kind, but personal kind. And this interview is just to put a smile on your face. <laughs> we have three guests, Dan and Betty Manning, and their car. For many people, their first car holds some sentimental value, at least after a while, but Generally, being youngsters with not a lot of money, the first car gets sold to pay for the second. And years later, you realize you wish you had that car back. But Dan didn't sell his. It's all good. Yep. What was your first car? You wish you still owned it? So, Dan. Yep. What were the circumstances surrounding you buying this car? Well, I didn't have a car at the time, and I got tired of borrowing my dad's car. And he was taking me back and forth to work. And so I decided I needed a car, and I messed around with some Model Ts with some friends, so I liked old cars. And I started looking around, and I found some Model As, and then I saw a 1928 Whippet, and I'd never heard of one. And my dad said, well, they were kind of popular back in the in the day and since i hadn't heard of it for some reason i decided i needed it and the price was three hundred dollars and all i had was two hundred dollars so i put that two hundred dollars down and made fifty dollar payments about every week or two i bought it i put down the first payment when i was 18 and i had it paid off when i was 19 in 1963. You two went on your first date in this car. In 1960? 1963. I bought it in February and then <laughs> drove it back and forth to work. Night in August, my friend Mike and I were driving the car around in our hometown, Salina, Kansas. And we were just south of the high school clock. And Mike had been telling me about this girl he knew that was a friend of his girlfriend. His girlfriend was Carrie Davis, and Betty Rollins was her best friend. And it, both of them, Carrie and Mike, had told Betty about me and me about Betty. And we were driving around in the car, and we met the car coming, and it was uh, Carrie's car, and Betty was riding in it. And so we stopped in the middle of the street, rolled down our windows, and we're talking back and forth. And we thought we ought to go someplace. And the, the fair was in town and had a carnival, so we decided, let's go to the carnival. And which car should we take? And we decided to take the Whippet. So we considered that our first date. We went to the carnival, and I had $2 in my pocket, and I spent every cent of it. <laughs> now, Betty, your friend, yes. she had a 56 Chevy? Yes, she did. So how did you feel when this guy pulls up in a 28 whip? I just liked him. You've been hearing about me for a while. I didn't care about cars. <laughs> it wasn't the car that got her attention. No. It was, that, it was. It was that slick driver. In the, in the... <laughs> it was a fun car, and she always enjoyed it. He used to come and pick me up at work sometimes when he was in town or whatever because he was in the Navy shortly after that, but. Right. When he was in town, uh, he'd pull up in front of this lady's dress shop where I worked, and they would all start whispering, I think your rotting's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, well, how long did you guys date? Three years. Quite a while, because when, when we met in August, then the next February... I went off to the Navy, Navy boot camp when I came back in August, August. of 66. Six. Then we took the whip and drove to the courthouse and got our marriage license. And we were kind of kind of thinking about using it as the getaway car after the wedding. Uh huh. And Betty had some relatives that she didn't trust. She thought maybe they would do some on ornery things to the car. So we parked it in my dad's garage and a friend of mine, we he came up, his dad had a dealership of 
AMCs in Wichita, <laughs> we used the AMC to, for our getaway car. We were leaving California that day. So. Going to my next duty station in, in San Diego. What did your parents think about the boy with the whip? <laughs> they liked him. He was okay? Uh, they didn't well, care about the car. He was so rare coming back home. You know, he was in the Navy. So he... Well... And, and I told my mom... She, I, she said, what are you doing this weekend? And I said, I have a date with who? Dan. Dan who? And I told her, and I said, I'm just going to write this down for you because I'm going to marry him. <laughs> it's kind of a loose operation. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You meet. Yeah. Six months later, you go off for two years. Okay. First of all, he goes to I go to school. Memphis for a year. Oh, for a year? Yeah. And then you're in the Philippines for a year and a half. A year and a half, right. yeah. Okay, so you're gone for two and a half years. Yeah. You and come back. Then we you, get married. You get married. You go to California and immediately ship out again. Yeah. Three months. Three months. Married three months when they stand back out. I was on, my squadron was uh, attached to the USS Enterprise. Well, that was kind of inconvenient. And, yeah. Really? <laughs> and Betty stayed in our apartment in San Diego. Before the ship was going to go back home for another cruise, I got out. And we lived, we got a job in Los Angeles with the phone company. And Betty's dad died, and that was in 68. Oh. Betty's dad died in 73. And we came back to Salina for his funeral. And my dad... When I had gone, got married, he started putting my old whippet in garages. And the first garage, he rented for $5 a month. Nice. He rented the garage of my first grade school teacher. She didn't have a car. So she died. Then he put it in another little old lady's garage for $5 a month. And a tornado almost hit it there. A tornado hit about two blocks away from it, but it didn't touch the car. Okay. And she died. And then when D Betty's dad died, then we asked Betty's mom, who didn't drive and she didn't have a car, if we could put the whip it in her garage. And we did. And I had another little uh, English sports car I put in there with it. And so we stored them there. And we'd come home every now and then and we'd run the whip it around a little bit and put it back in Betty's mom's garage. And then she died in 1979, and we bought the Whippet to Fair Grove, Missouri, where we lived. Don and I and a few other people in town decided we'd start having car shows at Fair Grove. And I got the kids off to shine up the old Whippet, and we drove it down there and parked it. And Jack walks across the street from his garage, and he says, could you put that in the original section of these cars? He said, I know a carburetor that is the original to that <laughs> Seven, eight, and nine were terrible years. Seven was a big forever. ice storm, and then this 100-mile-an-hour wind came was, through. The, I think that was... And then eight. a big, nasty hailstorm came through and tore the siding off our house, too. But uh, it happened, and that's, you know, relatively recent in the, in the old Whippet's life, but I was halfway tearing down an old building that I was storing it in. This wind came through and almost collapsed it on the far, and there was a two-by-six board that kept the roof from collapsing on it and I've got a little dent on the right front fender that is the only problem that happened to this car that everything could have fallen in on. My, wow. my son-in-law built a nice garage for, for, and left room in the front of it. While I was doing that it was getting pretty close to our 50th wedding anniversary and I kept thinking boy I would really like to use this car as part of that ceremony. I asked my friend Donnie Sharp, who restores John Deere tractors, if he'd be interested in restoring the engine. And I said, I've got some things I'd use as a trade for that. And I had an old 59 Chevy pickups. Oh, wow. And, and I traded that in on getting it restored. And I have two manuals. I've got an owner's manual for the whip, and I've got a shop manual, a parts manual. Oh, excellent. Manual. And it's got all the instructions. And so he used that and he rebuilt it. I might have 500 miles on it since 
Donnie rebuilt the edge, and we used it in our ceremony when we had our 50th wedding anniversary in 2016. So, Betty, what's your feeling on the old car? Oh, it's a part of our family. <laughs> we, we enjoyed it, and he's just been, you know, full of stories about it, and guys always want to come and see us, and uh -huh. takes people for a ride in the grandkids, and the kids have helped wash it or go for rides in it or whatever. Yeah. So it's it's a part of the family. I I like the car. Did you ever think, did you ever talk about getting rid of it? I did a time or two. When we, you know, young couples always oh, yeah. find a time when they need some money. Oh, I hear you. And Betty said, no. He said, she'd say, that's just too much a part of our family. That we're, that's it's that's not too what far, we're, huh? yeah, something would, we're not going to entertain. I would add something to that. 50th anniversary ceremony, I went out the back door at our house and there was a, like a bean can, carrot can. Tin cans. Tin cans. And I said, who is saving cans and what for? And Dan said, I wanted to use them when we leave the church. I said, and he did. They were tied to the bumper. They were harmless. They didn't do any damage to the car. That's, That's what good. I was concerned about leaving our wedding, people not knowing that we were driving to California, we didn't need to break down in the desert because somebody did something foolish. And so there's our story, comes to an end, as a man, his wife, and his car, or you could say a boy, his girlfriend, and their car. Oh, uh, yeah. All the same, the same characters yep. as 60 plus years before. We're all more delicate. <laughs> we are more delicate, yes. I tell Rob when he's trying to rev the engine a little bit, I said, no, treat her like she's a 96-year-old lady. There you go. Well, if home is where the heart is, perhaps Dan and Betty's Whippet is more their home than their house. <laughs> We've had it longer. You've had it, yes, much longer. Well, thank you for your time. This has been Wandering North America. My name is Jeff. You have a fine day, and do me a favor, hit that subscribe button.